We'd like to thank the Lord for having another opportunity to be able to come back into your home today. Uh, we wasn't able to make it Monday on account of the high water, so here we are on a, on a beautiful Wednesday morning, amen, being able to come in and visit with you and uh, just being able to brag on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You pray today that God will have his way in everything that is said and done, that his name will be lifted up above every name, and we pray today that the program will be a blessing to you. So we're going to start off with a song today, and the title of this one is, Lord, You've Been So Good. Amen. So you pray today as we try this song. Oh, Lord, You've Been So Good Through my troubles and my trials You've understood You've been everything like You said You would Lord, You've Been So Good Soul and you set me free, gave me life eternally. Lord, you've been so good. You picked me up when I was down, you set my feet on higher ground. No greater happiness I found. Lord, you've been so good. to you today. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer, ask the blessings up over the service, and we're going to ask Brother Jimmy, if he would, today to lead us off in a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here, Lord, to take this program, dear Lord, and we just thank you for all the blessings you've given us during all this storm and all this flooding and everything we've been going through, and we pray for those people that the lost loved ones, and we pray for all those that are still flooded in, Lord, and be with all those that don't know you, Lord. Help them to find you before it's too late, dear Lord. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, and be with the pastor as he brings the message this morning, Lord, and bless him. Amen. Amen. We'd like to take a little bit of time to thank the ones that call in and write in. Amen. The ones that we meet out on the street. Amen. We just uh, appreciate you from the depths of our heart. And pray that the program will do that which God intends for it to do, to reach out and touch somebody, maybe this lost, maybe this backslidden in heart, that they come to know the joys of the Lord. Amen. So you pray for us as we try another song, and then we're going to let my wife uh, come and make a few of our announcements. And my, uh, just be very much in prayer for us. Her brother's having a real hard time right now in the hospital, so uh, just keep him in prayer. I talked with the Lord many nights at my bedside, and I asked His forgiveness as I knelt to Him. Only to willing, for it 
died on the cross just to save us from sin. There's a light guiding me, and I can see heaven's glory. And it holds me steadfast to His way and His love. Guiding me through temptation and evil. As a light guiding me to that heaven above. To the far distant shore, many friends have gone before. Singing the praises of God's love I know Through the valley of death I'll be guided by Jesus He'll carry me over the wide weak and low There's a light guiding me me steadfast to his way and his love. It's guiding me through temptation and evil. There's a light guiding me to that heaven. today that's able to lead us and guide us and be able to carry us through. So you pray today as my wife comes and makes a few of our announcements today. I'd just like to thank everyone who has came and helped out with all the disaster that's been going on. All the guys from Iowa State who's given up the time with their families to come to North Carolina and help us all out. I just want to say I appreciate each and every one of you. And also, like Daryl said, just remember my brother and our family in, in prayer. He's in the hospital, and I know the Lord can intervene and touch his body without, you know, everything and keep him safe. So just pray for him. Also, I'd like to invite you to come out to our church. It's Grace Independent Baptist Church at 2507 Olivia Road in Sanford, North Carolina. Our Sunday school was at 10, morning worship is at 11. Our Wednesday night service is at 7. Our evening Sunday evening service is at 5. And if you're in the community, we'd love for you to stop by. Uh, the Blessing Box is still up and going good. If, and I appreciate the ones who's dropped off the food into the Blessing Box, especially at this time where people was has lost a lot of food from... You know, their power been out and stuff, and I really appreciate the people who's helped out. And 
I just want to say I thank God that he's always there for us and will lead and guide us and keep us safe. Honey? Hey, Amen. What a, what a blessing it is to be back with you this morning and be able to share a little bit uh, out of God's Word. And we got one verse of Scripture that we want to read to you today. And Well, uh, let's back up and do about... Uh, do about three pieces of scripture and want you to listen uh, to the reading of God's word. And uh, over in the book of Genesis in chapter number three, down in verse number eight, and he said, and, I, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he, and he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Thou hast eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat. Let us pray. Father, dear Lord, it's again God that we come to you this morning, Lord, with humble hearts. We come to you, Father, thanking you, Lord, for another day and another opportunity, Lord, that we might have to be able to stand and just to brag on this one called Jesus Christ. And God, we pray today that, Father, you would have your way, Lord, in everything, God, that is said and done. And may, may you just touch these prayers request today, Lord, to say, go out, Lord, and Father God, you'd be with them, Lord, that Lord, that might not know thee in the free part in the sin, that God, this might be their opportunity, Lord, to realize, God, what you're trying to tell them. And Lord, we pray today, God, above everything that thy word would accomplish that, that it was sent out to do. And God, just put your arms around about each and every one today, Father, and to help us today. Lord, to be able to preach the message, God, that is pleasing, Father, unto thee. And Lord, whatever's accomplished today, God, will not fail, Lord, to bow our head and to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory, Lord, for we ask it all in Jesus' holy and precious name we do pray, and amen. You know, if we had a, uh, a little thought to lay upon this today, I would like to use a thought about the ugliness of sin. Amen. Amen. We, uh, if we go back into the second chapter leading up to the third chapter, amen, we find out how that God had created everything and how that he put man, amen, in the garden to take care of the garden and to have fellowship uh, with God. Amen. But boy, we see how that uh, sin has crept in. Amen. And whenever sin crept in, they lost a lot of things. Amen. We uh, look in the scripture today. Amen. And first of all, whenever sin come into their life, they realized at that very moment, amen, that they was wrong. Amen. And boy, I'm telling you, that's the same way it is in our world today. Amen. Whenever sin steps in, it lets you know, amen, right at the very beginning uh, that you're getting ready to go down the wrong road. Road. Amen. But we find here that, amen, that how sin will bring guilt. Amen. It'll bring guilt into a person's life whenever we uh, say that we're walking with God and we're uh, having fellowship with God. Whenever sin comes in, it breaks that fellowship, amen, that we have uh, with Almighty God. And we find out here that sin here in the garden, amen, broke the fellowship that man had with God, amen, and how that, amen, when God come and he called unto Adam and Adam hid himself and he told the Lord, he said, I was afraid whenever I heard thy voice, amen, and boy, I'm telling you today, boy, I'm telling you, sin will cause fear to set in on your life, amen, sin will cause you to want to run and hide, amen, this scene, and I look around today and I see in this world and in this society 
society, amen, of how whenever sin comes into a person's life, the first thing that they avoid doing is being in the house of the Lord, amen, because they're afraid, amen, and that fear has set in on their life and they're running from the only one that is able to help them today, amen. We see here that sin finally caused God, amen, to cast Adam and Eve out of the garden, amen. We want to say today that sin, one of these days in our life, if we don't get rid of it, if we don't call upon God and ask God to cleanse our life and to cleanse our heart, one of these days sin is going to separate us from the best thing that we could ever have. See here in the Garden of Eden, sin separated Adam from the best thing that he ever had. It drove him out of the garden, never allowed him to be back in. Might I tell you today, if we die in our sins, a sin is going to separate us from that holy city that God has went away to prepare. Amen. And boy, how they will be able to look over him but never be able to enjoy the beauties of the Lord. I thought many of the time, maybe Adam, I might have come back to the garden and might have looked in. Amen. I might have realized what he could have had if he had only been obedient to God. And then we see that sin doesn't only bring guilt, but it brings a loss of fellowship. Boy, I'm telling you, there in the garden in the cool of the day, they had fellowship with God. Whenever we get saved and our life gets cleaned up, we come into the house of God and we have fellowship with this one called Jesus Christ. I'm so glad today, thank God tonight, we'll be able to go into the little old church that sits there along beside the road and have fellowship with this man called Jesus Christ. There'll be some that won't be able to be there tonight and it might be on the count of guilt in their life and the way that they have strayed away from the Lord so we find out that sin brings a break of fellowship Isaiah said that your iniquity have separated you from your God amen we find out here today that Adam and Eve lost fellowship and then sin always does something else sin always tries to blame somebody else amen this scene and Adam tried to blame Eve he blamed the devil amen neither one of them was able to accept the blame amen see a sinner will always blame somebody else amen he'll blame somebody else for his condition we get into church and well somebody fell out of church well it was on the count of the church was doing this and I didn't believe in it listen today sin always tries to cast the blame amen this scene and brethren I'm telling you today we live in a nation I don't worry you look at our government and you look at the statutes and then it comes down and how that sin always blames somebody else the drunk always blames somebody else for being a drunk the dope addict always blames somebody else for being a dope addict listen today sin in our country and in our nation has about run our people amen this sin and brother it's tore our families apart it's brought destruction in on to our land I think about this hurricane that come through this past week boy how that God might be very well trying to get somebody's attention that he is still God but listen today it not only brings a, a guilt and it doesn't only bring a loss of fellowship sin doesn't always blame somebody else but sin will cause that eternal separation you know what causes death sin does amen you never read about any death in the Bible until sin come in and when sin come in it brought with it a penalty of death you look around today why are people dying because 
all sin uh, was introduced into the world. Uh, God created man and he created woman uh, to have fellowship with him. Uh, and they broke that fellowship. Uh, we look at our country today. I'm reminded uh, of what Psalmist said. The nation uh, that forgets God shall be turned into hell. Uh, honey, might I tell you today, this country uh, is about as far away from God as it's ever been. Uh, amen. This scene and listen, boy. Uh, and one of these days, it's going to cause a permanent uh, a separation between us. Uh, and God, listen, if there's sin in our life, uh, we need to get it out. How do you get it out? Uh, you call upon the one that is able to remove it. Uh, and his name is Jesus Christ. Uh, if we come to him and say, Lord, we have failed you. Uh, God, in so many ways, and I've sinned against thee. Uh, and Lord, I beg your forgiveness. God said uh, he would take us back into the fall uh, and clean us up, amen, and put us on the road uh, and that leads to glory. There's not but one way uh, to get around sin. There's not one way to get rid of it. Uh, and that's through the blood of the Lord and Savior, uh, and Jesus Christ, God, uh, and made a blood sacrifice here in the garden uh, that he might clothe Adam and Eve. Listen today, uh, whenever we come down and all sin are bowed down, uh, our feet, amen, bowed down at his feet uh, and pray that prayer today uh, and believe in our heart. Uh, amen, this sin and have faith in him. Uh, he's going to do what he said he was going to do. You know what Jesus does? Uh, he clothes us with the righteousness uh, of Almighty God. Boy, ain't you glad today one writer said, uh, my life is hid in God uh, through Jesus Christ. There's coming a day uh, that sin will have its due reward. Uh, and those that have sinned, uh, they'll reap the reward of what death calls. Uh, amen. The Bible said for the wages of sin uh, is death. We find here that Adam and Eve died uh, before they was ever casted out of the garden. Uh, he died that spiritual death. Uh, about 900 years later, Adam died the physical death. Uh, I don't know about the eternal death. God does not say, uh, and I'm not one to judge, but boy, I'm telling you what today, uh, there's some people that is left off of the face of this earth uh, and are eternally dying. Uh, they've been dying for hundreds of years, for thousands of years, uh, and they're still dying. Uh, and a million years from now, now they'll continue to die uh, because sin causes that separation. Uh, it causes us to lose what God uh, has prepared for us. Listen today, Jesus uh, uh, said in the 14th chapter of the book of John, uh, he said, I go away to prepare you a place that where I am uh, or you may be also listen today. God uh, uh, wants to save you today. He wants to help you. Uh, he wants to get sin out of the way. He wants to take that precious blood and to cleanse our life and to make him one of ours. So today, call upon the one that is able to help you. The bottle can't help you and drugs can't help you. Living in adultery can't help you. Amen. This scene of but there's one that can and his name is Jesus Christ. Boy, when God threw Adam and Eve out of the garden, he didn't put them out for just a temporary part time uh, and then allowed them to come back in. Uh, uh, but he throwed them out of the garden and they never was uh, allowed to come back in when God makes that final judgment at the great white throne judgment and we stand before God. Amen. The only ones that's going to be there is the ones that are lost and has never had their names wrote down in the Lamb's book of life. And as God goes through the books one more time, amen, boy, and I'm telling you, the people hear them words, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. Amen. And they're casted into that lake of fire, into outer darkness, where they'll be weeping and gashing of teeth. That's not going to be for just a little while. It's going to be all through eternity. Boy, I'm telling you, I believe that Adam looked back over his life and he realized where that he had went wrong and where that he messed up and how that he, we 
used to many of the time that he'd have called upon the Savior. I believe that today when they were in the rich man raised up his eyes out of hell and he looked across and he seen Lazarus laying in Abraham's bosom. I believe right then he knowed where he had messed up. He knew that he had let the sins take a main priority over his life. He knew he couldn't get out. But boy, he sure prayed a prayer that God would send somebody back and warn his five brothers lest they too come to this awful place. Listen today. Hell is a place prepared for the devil and these angels at death. Amen. Boy, whenever death comes in and it separates us, it'll separate that sin. It'll separate you from God forever and ever. Listen today. Jesus wants to love you. And the only thing he wants you to do is he wants you to love him. Amen. And let him live in your heart and live into your life. You say, preacher, how do I get started on that today? Well, Romans said, he said, with a man's heart, he believeth unto righteousness. Amen. That's believing that God is who he says he is, that God will do what he says he'll do. Amen. That God would save a poor old rich sinner like us. Amen. To say, well, with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Boy, we need to fess up. Amen. We need to confess before God and let God come in and lift us up and let God restore us. And then Romans also said, and they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm glad today in this lost and dying world that we live in, there's one that we can call on and is able to save us. There's one that we can call on. Amen. That is able to set us free. Able to put our names in the Lamb Book of Life and write our name upon the roll and put our feet up on the rock and he'll be a savior to you. He'll be one that'll never leave you, never forsake you, but go all the way. So don't let sin take you to the point that it took Adam and Eve. Don't let sin take you to the point of where it did the rich man to where uh, when something tragic happens in your life, they ain't no repairing the damage. They ain't no fixing it. They ain't no calling upon the Lord. So today, while the breath is in your body, amen, blood are running through your veins, you need to call upon the sweetest name they are, and that name is the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let him come into your life. Let him save you today. May God bless you until this time next week. Sit down, get, write us a letter, give us a call. Amen. We'll be praying for each and every one of you.